It's time for this week's Uplift. Three ordinary guys that want you to find the freedom that is available by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. So sit back and enjoy Uplift, brought to you by the Fulcrum Center. Visit our site at thefulcrumcenter.org. Well, good evening, everybody. And uh, we're a little bit slap happy here tonight, to be honest. We uh, Just a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> Ian broke out some teddy bear cookies, <laughs> and it just kind of went crazy from there. Sugar rush. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Phil was over trying to get our technical equipment working because, you know, our, sometimes our technical equipment just gives us fits for reasons that are just completely unknown. But we're here, and yes. the title of tonight's show is Anything Goes Around Two. And the beauty of it is, is we're all three here together tonight. Yes. You know, so that's a great thing, yeah. um, you know, because it's been a little, you know, people but got stuff going on and we've been going here and there. Mm-hmm. But we're all three together tonight. Yes. And so I'm Chad McLeish. I'm Ian Thornton. And I'm Phil Bliss. And welcome to Uplift. And we're going to turn the mic over to Phil here because <laughs> Phil has something very important to discuss. Well, before I bring that up, I do want to ask you guys, did you like the cricket? The cricket? <laughs> oh, I did like yeah. the cricket. <laughs> yes. Last week. Oh, yeah. We just yeah. love it when you pick on us, Phil. <laughs> you know? I know. Yeah. I know. Nothing like, like getting poked in the yeah, chest. Yeah, nothing like getting roasted on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate that, Phil. Yeah, for all of our thousands of viewers. Well, you know, I really liked how we I, – I think it was a God thing that you guys didn't say anything when I asked you because Anything Goes was a great topic last week, and I think it's going to yeah. be a good topic again this week. Yeah, it was. But um, I do want to bring up something. Um, December 1st of this year, my second book will be coming out, Four Hearts. It's a continuation. Well, it's a prequel. Uh, it's a prequel of 40 on 70. It's how the person, the, one of the characters in 40 on 70, um, how this person gets to be at the point where this person is. And I'm trying not to use pronouns here because I don't want to spoil if anybody hasn't read it yet. Um, to gets to the point where they meet the main character from 40 on 70. Hmm. Um, so it's uh, it's a... Backstory, if you will, um, but it also has a new character, and this character is not human. This character is an angel, a neurotic angel at that, but um, you'll get to meet this both of these characters on December 1st, 2022, when Four, or Four Hearts comes out, and I'm not sure yet if I'll have copies available on that day, but I'll have them shortly after that, but you can start buying it on um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the places, Google, Apple, you can buy it on December 1st. Hmm. Man, that sounds great, Phil. And just keep us posted too, you know, yeah. as, as things move forward and, and we get closer to that date, um, just keep pouring us out some information on it. It's, it's, it's a really, the, the, the first book 40 on 70 was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it really mm-hmm. was. And, yeah. and. Reading through that, um, I I know just for myself reading it, but then so many other people that have read that and that I've had a chance to talk to and comment have spoken more about the book from a personal impact level than just a, a, an easy read or yeah. good story, you know, those type of things. It, it really drove a lot of things home into people's hearts that they personally needed. Mm-hmm. And and the one thing, one of the lines that, that I've heard constantly um, in talking to people about the first book, 40 on 70, is I found myself in, mm-hmm. or whatever chapter it may be, mm-hmm. or whatever they're, yeah. or part of the yeah. story that they're reading. Mm-hmm. But it really is, you really do find yourself somewhere in that book. Mm-hmm. And God just reaches in and makes a connection with you with what's going on in that story. Mm-hmm. It, it's really, really well done, mm-hmm. and at the same time, very impactful, which I know is was was so much of your heart mm-hmm. in putting it together. Right, right. So it's neat to watch how it really has unfolded and impacted a lot of people. Yeah. It was it was an awesome story. Uh, and Absolutely, you, and you can't put the book down. The forty yeah. and seventy yeah. book was awesome. You really didn't want to put it down. And you know, I've I've read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books in my life, and it was like, man, this is very entertaining. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, it was good. But what Phil, I got to ask, since this is anything goes round two. Yeah. Did you did you take up my uh, request to change the car this time? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's funny you mention that because at the end of forty on seventy, I put a little teaser about what the second book would be about, uh-huh. and I had to change that character a little bit to make it make the story flow better. Uh-huh. So. Um, some people are going to be going and looking for this really strong angel ready to take on demons, and you're not going to find that in this mm, character. Okay. But So that's the only thing I changed. She still has the red car. No. Oh. But it's not mentioned very often, okay? <laughs> it's not mentioned very often. <laughs> I mean, you know, the whole purpose I mean, of the book is about the car. You I mean, know? Like, I'm, what do it take? I'm maybe one facetious. chapter to have him go, you know, just trade it in? Yeah. Or well, sell I'll tell you it, what, Chad. <laughs> Just a chapter, Phil. That's all we're asking. God has already been giving me plenty of information about the third book. Okay. Wow. Which Great. I am really excited about the third one. Um, and it's called Unraveled Identity. And it is about the two main characters trying to find their identity in this world mm. and helping others find their identity in this world. Mm. And um, there is no red car. Oh, it starts wow. out with a... Muscle car. No. <laughs> right. A, a, a truck pulling a trailer, a okay. camper. Oh, they, they're going to perfect. Be, okay. They're going to be on the road again, not in Interstate 70, but they'll be on the road. 57 GMC. Their first stop, I will give this away, their first stop is Bolero, Ohio. Oh, okay. Yep. Nice. That's cool. Yep, their first stop. I've already written the first chapter. Their first stop is Bolero, Ohio. And I bet, and I, I, Fantastic. Know, I know the camper trailer thing. I, I know where this is going, and I like it. Yes, yes, yes. You're yes. gonna love it. it right. I think it's it's got some twist to it. Um, the sec the end of the second book has a huge twist, okay. and that twist carries on into the third. But then it even has a bigger twist at the end of the third book. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it really is. It's that's amazing awesome. to watch all of this come together. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm not gonna set any dates as far as when that book's coming out because I I just want to let it mm-hmm. be organic and flow. As God gives it to me, sure, I'll write it. So, and the beauty about the forty on seventy was, I feel like people who are not believers could pick up that book and truly understand a lot of things mm-hmm. that a non-believer w- would not normally understand. Yeah, you know, it's tragedy and what becomes w- how God makes that <laughs> tragedy into something good. Yeah, you know. And and truly, how to you know all those situations about how to walk through tragedy and all those sorts of things mm-hmm. that non-believers you know um, wouldn't necessarily understand. So I think that was the beauty of that book. Mm. You know? Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, the second one is geared more towards believers, but at the same time, if you can accept that there's an angel speaking about human nature and human behavior. I believe in a non-believer could still get a lot out of it as well, but that's for everybody else to decide. I'm not going to tell everybody what that, you know. I'm the only one that knows what this book is right now. So, so let God me get this I. straight. You have an angel talking about human behavior. Mm-hmm. Is it fifteen thousand pages long? Just, <laughs> I know, just right? Throwing oh, it yeah. out there. <laughs> you know, you are so right. And I even make a point in there to say, you know, we, he's talking to another angel. We could talk for years and years and not even scratch the surface on human behavior. So yeah. I do throw that in there. Because yes, it would be fifteen thousand pages long, but <laughs> it, would be it just longer. hits on the highlights. It would be longer than War and Peace. Yes, all <laughs> oh, my words. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. That, yeah, it really is, man. It's really, it's really neat and exciting mm-hmm. to watch to watch these things come about. Yeah. It, yeah. it really is, and just and thank you for putting all the effort into it. Yeah, just, yeah. It, so many people have been touched by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what the Lord's doing in and through that story. And it does connect to so many people on so many different levels and in so many different ways. Um, clearly, God put it together. Oh, yeah, but, uh, absolutely. But it's just great. Thank you for taking the time to do yeah. it. And one we need to thank is Tanya for allowing me to have the time to write it because yeah. I don't know how many times yeah. she oh, you're working on your book again? Okay. You know, so yeah. thank you, Tanya, for – and I do thank her in, in the acknowledgments. Absolutely. Thank you for letting me have the time to write this book. It's um, I'm excited. I mean, mm. it's done. I'm, I'm going doing some fine tuning, and I'm going to release it to some beta readers next week. Mm-hmm. Wow! Yeah, 
That's coming. Then, uh, yeah. Should That's have great. it ready by December 1st. That's awesome. Yep. Good. It really is. Yep. Okay, so that's our show. <laughs> I know, right? But it was really—it's really neat to to walk through that. Yeah, you know, and to yeah. and to to just really because it's it's several things that I I'm you know listen as we're talking and about the book and all, but I'm also seeing. I mean, you know, there's there's so many things like you know you taking the time to to tell Tanya thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, how many times do we get into things that we're doing in life and that we know that we're you know called into or this is what the Lord wants us to do. And there are so many people that in the background and behind the scenes so to say mm-hmm. are there supporting yeah. and encouraging mm-hmm. and and really lifting us up, you know, and I, and I I think of Moses's arms being lifted up. Yeah. You know, yeah. In, yeah. <clears throat> um but there are so many people that that really are um, behind the scenes, and they're cheering for us, and and we don't even know it, you know. Yeah. But they're there. That's yeah. Right. I just you know that's, that's just really neat. And that's the, true. You know, another thing too is just to walk through what God has put on your heart, mm. and if yeah, how it doesn't matter how new or difficult or different um, it might be, if God leads you into doing something, stepping into that newness is part of the journey. Mm-hmm. And it's part of the journey with him. Mm-hmm. Right, and you right. really get to know him right, right. during those times. And I'm sure, Phil, you know, with that book, with your first book, you could probably really speak to that. Oh, absolutely. Because you're trying you're you're working to listen to the Lord and right. what to write. Right. But then this whole thing and process and writing and publication and all that is a new process for you. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I first started writing it, my goal was I just had this idea and I just wanted to put it down. I just wanted to be able to say, Hey, I wrote a book. And, you know, then I started going to God saying, Okay. Well, what about this? And, and, you know, there was, there's a, for those who read it, there was like two chapters that didn't make the director's cut, <laughs> if you will. Um, so maybe someday we'll, I'll release the deleted yeah, scenes, you, you know. Um, but it just didn't flow with the rest of it. But that was all God. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just came to me very clearly one day cut that out, cut that whole chapter out, cut that part out. I'm like, okay. So I saw that God was was mm. writing it for okay. me and yeah. it, you know it was enhancing my relationship with him hearing from him better That's and good. really getting closer to him as a result of being obedient to writing this book and um in this wow. in the second one I've actually learned things just because I start typing it and I'm like Really? And then I go look it up on the internet and people are confirming it. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess that is a thing. Huh. You know, and so I know it was God telling me these things. But yeah, it if you have an idea like that, take time. Mm. You know, and, and it's funny you mention that because I'm helping a, a friend publish a book right now through Folk and Pu- Publishing. And as I'm going through the step by step, I'm thinking back to last year. Oh, I remember when I was doing this and didn't know what I was doing. And, and now I'm just. You know, he's like, I don't know what to do. I say, I'll take care of it. Click, click, click. You know, okay, your book's ready. It'll be out October 29th. His, his is wow, coming out. really? So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, his is called Thaddeus Grant, Island of Reconciliation. Um, so, you know, that all this really has gotten me thinking. You know, you just did the spiritual warfare workshop at the, the Friends Church in St. Clairsville, mm-hmm. and we've been talking about doing other workshops. And I really feel very strongly that we need to do one on hearing God's voice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and that can branch off into other things. But as I was driving out here tonight, mm. um, I, I was thinking, you know, I've said this to other people and I've seen people start doing it. Give God credit. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, yeah, God, is it, is it all right to give you credit even if you didn't do it? And what I got back was if I didn't They'll know if I didn't do it because if they if they say I can't give that give that give God credit for that thought I just had, then you know it didn't come from God. So now you're hearing the voice of the enemy and right. recognizing that as well. Mm-hmm. So if you try to give God credit and you realize, hey, wait, I shouldn't give credit to God for that, then you know you didn't hear it from God. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's something that I think we can. You know, work together and, and develop and Absolutely. present sometime. It, well, I, it's it's really important. It is, and, and you know, and we've talked about this 
you know, many, many times. But as, as we're watching things accelerate in the earth mm -hmm. uh, on many different levels, on many different fronts, yes, some very, very positive. Yep. Some not. not. So much. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <just> not, not. <laughs> but, but it is accelerating. And so, so one of those things is as all of this comes together, that there, there's people that are going to go, you know, I really want to be sure that I'm following what the Lord wants. And, and I see this other path that is unfolding in mm -hmm. front of people, and I don't want that, mm -hmm. but I want this. Mm -hmm. And so as they pursue that other path, then people are going to be wondering that exact question. Yeah. How, do, how do I hear the Lord, how do I know that he's, or how do I know that he's communicating with me? Because we know he communicates in many, many different ways. It's not always, quote unquote, the thoughts or, you know, in our ears. But how do I connect with the Lord and understand that he's communicating with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be a question that people are going to be asking by the droves. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I believe the time is coming I, I totally and is agree. already here when they're, they're going to be asking one, out of their own desire and curiosity, and two, because God is going to put it in them to want to know Him and mm. hear Him better. Mm -hmm. So we need to be ready to explain to people, yes, you're hearing from God. No, you're not hearing from God. Here's why you're not hearing from God. Here is why you are hearing from God. Seeing, putting it all together. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. You know, really create the how. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, you know, one thing that we had been texting back and forth about yesterday or the day before was that um, a young guy had shared with you a, a vision or a dream that mm, he had yes. yeah. the, about the tree and the fruit. Yes. And as I understand it, I think that that means that there's a lot of people going to be getting fruits and gifts and, and mm. receiving that mm. in this, in yeah. as part of the, our spiritual gifting and all that sort of thing. So there's going to be a lot more people out there, you know, and all sorts of different things and talents. You know, people are going to be writing books. People are going to be directing films. People are going to mm. be um, doing kingdom business stuff. People are going to be min doing go new people are going to be going into ministry and, and whatnot. And um, that ties right into what you're talking about yeah. because that way – you can hear what God's telling you and understand what your new gifting, let's call it, is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, like for Phil, Phil's like, I need to write this book. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be people that are going to be like, I feel gifted to do this. Mm. That's very new to me. And they're going to be like, where is this coming from? Right, right. right. And, and as I can attest to being a relatively new in at this level – of, you know, in my walk, it's confusing for people, yeah. you know, because it's like, man, this is a new thing. What do I do with it? How mm. do I do with it? And, um, yeah, so the taking the patience to listen in the midst of that is really important, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And patience is the key there because... I know that as a person, <laughs> you reminded me last week to be patient, and I needed that I reminder. About that, no, no, <laughs> I needed that because I, I, I'll be honest, and I'm, I'm boasting in the Lord. I got to the point where I was a little more patient, but then I kind of didn't keep it up and fell back, and so I needed that reminder. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is. What you get is can be an exciting thing when something new is happening and you know God is speaking, you know He's moving, and you know that you're doing the right thing and this is for God, but you still have to be patient yeah. and let it develop. And I, as you both said, things are accelerating. People's gifts will come in accelerated pace. Mm, yeah. But at the same time, patience is still required, even if it's okay, I got to wait five days instead of you know, 50 days or five years, but wait that five days. Yeah. yeah. Not, don't do it all in five minutes. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, there's an acceleration, but still patience is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And two, you know, Chad, you had brought this up too, as far as being able to, to understand God's communication with us um, as things are moving forward and people are stepping into their new places and spaces, um, those type of things that they're, in tune with the Lord. And, you know, one of the reasons, you know, 
in the the Holy Spirit is deposited into us is so that we can have that communication. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that's one of the things, you know, when Jesus um when he left the earth and told the disciples, you know, wait, because the Holy Spirit's gonna come upon you, yeah. you know, he he told them to wait for the Spirit so that they could communicate with the Lord. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't give them the local priest's phone number mm-hmm. so that they could call him. <laughs> right. Right, right. right. And it's just like in the same thing, you know, God is is allowing all of us, you know, those listening and and, and the three of us sitting here to be able to share and show people how to be in relationship with the Lord so that they're reaching out to Him Mm -hmm. with their questions and direction and not depending upon the man. That's right. And so, right, right. Which most times people are like, call the pastor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Call the pastor. Yep. I have a question about call the pastor. Yep. Well, I wish I knew this decision. Call the pastor. And it's not that. It's like it really is for us to step into that deeper one-on-one intimate personal relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we need to stay focused on that. That's absolutely true. we got to develop and hone our relationship and our conversations because Phil and Ian aren't going to always be around. Yeah. yeah. At two, we've said this before at two and three o'clock in the morning, Phil and Ian are going to appreciate if I pick up the phone and go <laughs> home and ask him a question. I mean, they might not mind it, but their wives are probably not going to be really Yeah. Yeah. Them. I'm just going to yeah. forward my phone to Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's funny. You can just do that auto forward. Yes. Yeah. You know? yeah. right. That's right. Smartphones. They're real smart. Yeah. I think it's important. And, and, you know, Andrew Walmack always said he, uh, I loved it when he said this, but he said, you know, he said, when we bow our heads to pray, we're looking at the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I like that. I know. Isn't that and, awesome? And, and some of us have more of it than others. <laughs> 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 I loved it. I mean, I just, I busted out laughing. I was walking on the bike trail when he said that, when I heard him say that, when I was listening to one of his things, and I, I just chuckled. I busted out laughing. But it's true. Yes. You know, it's not like we have to wait for the clouds to pass. We don't have right, to wait for, right. you know, like we don't have mm, to, to go and, and wait wait for Phil or Ian to be available next Wednesday or whatever uh, to to talk with the Lord, you know. And, and that's one thing that I think a lot of people are going to discover in these coming times, is that they're going to have their own personal relationship. And a lot of people are very not used to that. I wasn't. If yeah, I if there was yeah. something serious to be prayed about, I went to Kathy. I went to my wife and was like, hey, like, you know, we've talked about this before. You know, I'd go to her and be like, hey, you know, like, you've got that tight relationship with God. Like, I need you to put a word in for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or, or, <laughs> right. or Phil. I mean, you know, back, you know, when Phil first became our pastor, it would be like, hey, Phil, like, you know, hey, can you... Say a prayer for me for this, and Phil yeah. was probably thinking, like, you're nuts. Like, <laughs> you say your own prayer. <laughs> yeah, go say your own prayer. <laughs> no, let me tell you a story. Long ago, when I first started, this was in 1999 in the fall. I mean, I was brand new as a pastor. Um, we, um, it might have been 2000, but it still it was brand new. But we, the church I was at, we started a youth center in the parsonage. Mm-hmm. Um, I was not using the parsonage, so we started a youth center and. Um, somebody had a contact at the newspaper, the Times Leader, and they sent somebody out to interview me. And they took a picture of me sitting by, like, there's a stack of board games, and I think I was at a chess board or something. You know, and he interviewed me, and it was a nice little write up. And at the end, he says, You know, my kids got baseball this weekend, and they've been rained out twice already. You think you could put in a good word for me that it doesn't rain this weekend? <laughs> like, you can do it yourself. I said to him, I said, you can pray too. It's not just me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if it rained that weekend or not. I don't remember, but yeah. <laughs> I think I prayed that it would rain. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. Now the truth comes out. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's important. It's important for people to realize that. It is. You know? and, yeah, uh, it really is. You know, like like we've been talking about, you know, the, we're, the, the world is moving and shifting into a new time. You know, this isn't the time for your, your grandma's church. Mm-mm. And so it's important for all of us to really know the Bible ourselves, know the Word ourselves, have our own relationships for that reason. Yes. Because there's yeah. going to be... All sorts of things. There's going to be all kinds of new, amazing, new, powerful things. There's going to be a lot of things shifting and moving. And, um, you know, we just have to kind of be humble and in a position to receive 
whatever yeah. God That's has really coming good. coming our way. And you know, I believe if we stay humble, that you know, it says in the Word, the first, you know, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Right. And I think that we're going to be witnessing that in the coming times, and I think we just got to stay humble. One of our good friends, well, Jim Brim, who's yes. been on the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jim Brim, you know, made a comment that, you know, when we were talking about this text that, you know, that uh, mm-hmm. we were talking about over the last couple of days, Jim was like, we need to be looking up at the fruit and not down at the branches. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, that's good. good. That was really good. Yes, it was. Absolutely. And, and we got to stay humble, you know? We yep. really do because you know it's easy for us in human nature. Phil's talking about the angel with human na- talking about yeah. human nature. Human nature is that we can start thinking all that junk. We can let that junk in in our head, like oh, we're better than someone else and that sort of thing. Well, we're not. We're equals. Oh, now I got to add another chapter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, gonna... you're right, though, Chad. You are right. I didn't mean to take that away from no, you. you. I was right. going to say you better be careful because God might be putting something on the cutting room floor. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But no, we we really do. We got to we got to remind ourselves that just because maybe we're more experienced and more uh, have more time invested into these re- our relationship with the Lord doesn't mean we're any better than that's right anyone else. You know, and that's one thing that is important for us to be cognizant of and, and remember. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Man, that is so true. You know what, guys? I made a mistake. I forgot to look at what time we started, but I think it's been close to a half hour. You got three minutes left. You you watched it? I did. Okay, we got three minutes. Okay, so I want to say something then. Good. I heard the words today, and I don't remember where I heard this. House church, okay? And I think it might have been in the meeting. Somebody, I don't know which of the I was in two meetings with him today. I don't know which one, but somebody said house church, and immediately God just showed me that it's not if two or more are gathered in His name, there He is also. Right. Your church doesn't have to be like the the compact center in Texas with Joel Osteen. It doesn't have to be seven hundred and fifty in in worship on in one service. It doesn't have to be. Even 50 in one service. If you have three people there or four people, I once went on a Sunday morning, there were three people there because it was a terrible snowstorm and they couldn't, I don't know why they didn't call me, but they said they couldn't get a hold of me to tell me to not come. So there's three of us there. We still had a service and God Mm. was still there. And we still all learned something that day. So no matter what the size if you are gathering in your home with somebody else, or if you are going to a church that says you are struggling because you only have 20 people, stop saying you're struggling, saying we're worshiping God, no matter what size you are. Mm. It doesn't matter. And especially in these times that are coming, God wants our hearts worshiping Him, regardless of how many people we're with. Yes. Heart position. Mm-hmm. It's a part of what what Chad, what you were talking about as far as humility. Yes, that's a heart posture, heart yeah. position. Yeah. No matter how many people you're sitting with, yep. or you're, you know, that you're 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 meeting with, you know, right. it's the heart right. position. And yeah, God is is super focused on that reality mm-hmm. versus the tradition or 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 you fill in the blank. Yep. And he may take that three or that 20 and turn it into multiples. He could. He could. Or he could take that thousand and bring it down to five. Yes. He could. And it may not have anything to do with walls, right? Right. Right. You might be outside uh, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. On the side of a hill. (laughs) That's exactly right. It was good enough for Jesus. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Good enough. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so we out of time now, or <laughs> <laughs> I think you're pretty close. Phil. Okay, all right. Yeah, I forgot to look up at the clock, so I'm glad you did. I had I had your tonight, back. Chad. Yeah, I had your back. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining in. Um, it was really good. Absolutely. Anything goes. Part two. I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys it very was, much. It was really good. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. Always is. Yep. Um, thank you for watching and listening. And, and if you have any questions, any feedback, you know, I actually, for Bible time, I purposely said, 
in on Facebook. Give me some feedback. I got a bunch of feedback. Did so you? I'm saying again, give us some feedback. Yes, give us some. We feedback. would like to yeah. have some feedback on what you like, what you don't like. Yes, let us know. And we'd love to talk about whatever topics you would like. Yes. Posting. Yeah, and yeah, in the feedback, send us some topics. Yep. Send us some prayer requests. That's right. Absolutely. Different things like that. We would love to be praying with you and just walking alongside you in, in the things that you may be facing. And we promise we won't let Phil pray for rain for baseball games. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it'd be uh, two it'd be two versus one, so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right, guys. Well, we will be back again next week. Um I don't think all of us will be here next week, but that, we'll see how things go. Yeah, looking so. forward to it. All right. We'll see you. Blessings. Song downtown, you know downtown. Yeah, yeah. Downtown. No, I, I don't. I don't know that. Can you sing a few more lines. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Sing it to the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we can catch voice. it. I have the beautiful singing voice that you two do. So. <laughs> oh, we ought to sound really good together. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Phil, Phil nonchalantly shuts his microphone. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> well, you shut my microphone off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.